when people turn on their government, there's a label for it. It is called treason. And I've been wondering, what is the word for when the government turn on the people? Is there one word that when you hear it, you know straight up that this is a betrayal on the people and it is equivalent to treason and require the same level of punishment? Sure, people talk about corruption. They talk about abuse of power, malpractice or exploitation, but these labels can be assigned to anyone. You don't have to be a government official. But when you hear the word treason, people know exactly what this means. And as we know, before someone is punished, there's a label that is put upon them. A label that let the world know that this person has went against the law and is going to get punished for it. Now, there's this thing in the Caribbean that I've realized have been happening where the people will elect a leader simply because the person have their dialect or was born in the country. They don't concern themselves with the roots of the person, their affiliation, their connection. These people can be first or second generation nationals of your country and you pick them to be your leader. Now, I understand that if your own local people, the people who share your roots, do not see any value in sharing your roots, then it creates a level playground with those people coming into the country and claim that they are locals and that they are for the people. A few weeks ago, an incident happened in St. Lucia where the people stood up against some investors who purchased some land that the locals enjoyed for many, many years. So you hear many of your prime ministers, many of your elected officials label your country as now a tourist country and they put a lot into turning the country into a top tourist spot what are the people of saint lucia doing because i promise you that those people who you chase off of the beach they did not simply walk away i can promise you or i can assure you that they went back to the office and they had meetings probably multiple meetings and they have devised a plan on how they are going to move forward but have you the local people devise a plan on how you will move forward i am willing to bet that it did not happen and here's why i'm so confident in saying that back in 2023 those two beautiful landmark mountains that you have that are protected heritage site by the United Nations. Those landmark peaks that visitors see as they approach Castries, whether they are approaching by air or by sea. Back in 2023, rights activists tried to reverse all the commercial activities near the peaks and its surrounding areas. And how did we get there? How is it that in 2023, you have activists marching against the commercial building around the Python Peaks? Well, here's how we happen. Until a few years prior, successive government had rejected applications from billionaire developers to construct private and even commercial buildings. And they reiterated to these applicants that it was a world heritage or protected site whose pristine nature must be preserved at all costs. In no way in this statement did I see or heard anything that attached the land to the people. And that is how the local people continue to allow others to play chess with them when they separate you from the land. The reason the land is such a heritage. The reason why the land is so special is because of the history, the roots, the people. The people are the land and the land are the people. You cannot allow people to simply graft themselves into who you are. 
Because when you allow people to simply graft themselves in and don't question their background, then you're going to have a problem. Back in 2015, the former Prime Minister, Kenny Anthony, who was a leader of SLP, granted approval to an application from the Rosie Billionaire family linked to the Dollarama chain in Canada to develop eco-friendly private property and villas for high-end tourism. This man, Kenny Anthony, his father was a European. I think he was a British man or French man. And his mother was local. And that is why I am so against the divesting thing. Because these people don't realize how detrimental and how dangerous of a game they are playing. By allowing people to morph themselves in. Because look at who he sold the land to. He did not offer the land to the locals. The locals were upset. The locals did not find out until long after that this man has sold the land. And following him, taking such an action in 2015, one year later, he resigned. He dropped his um, resignation, but decided to continue to be a part of the politics. So for decades, the locals had assumed that no commercial construction whatsoever could have been lawfully granted or permitted in the area. But that was until the previous rejected application was mysteriously approved and paved the way for the construction of a massive complex. The former PM, Kenny Anthony, the same man, has admitted in public interviews that part of the land being used actually falls in the off-limits area and that another portion of it was privately owned and sold to the Canadians. His comment triggered an outrage and it goes back to what I said earlier. What's next? I saw an article recently that attached a location to the United Nations body. But why is it that we have to run behind the United Nations for protection? Why that have to be our excuse? Why are the people scared to say that, look, this is our land. This is the land that our ancestors were enslaved on. This is the land that our ancestors fought for. This is our land. I don't understand why black people so willingly give up the rights of what their ancestors fought for, for independence. I don't get that. Well, I, I do and I do not. Because it goes back to if they realize that the people who look like them, the people who share their roots, do not see any real value in embracing their roots, then how are they better than a colonizer who come into the land? But anyway, after the locals found out that this man sold the land to Canadians, they complained saying that the construction had blocked public access to beach and surrounding areas and that if they had known that permission was ever possible in the area to build or to purchase land, they believe that the locals should have been given the chance before anybody else to purchase the land. The local people believed that their local government authority had acted rather suspiciously in granting such approval to a Canadian business. As opposition to the project grew, a government statement at the time indicated that at no time, at no time was any aspect of development in question approved that would threaten the designation of Python's management area as a World Heritage Site. So they go back to flipping words and playing with you and treating you like you are some idiots and you all allow this to slide. And it's going to continue to repeat itself until people get wise. Unify because the only power the local people have is your numbers and the purity and your roots. Understand that you all across national boundaries share a common root and a common history. 
and sure our roots is Africa, but Africa is out there catching hell as well. So we have to make sure that our Caribbean and our unity in the Caribbean is strong. So years after these government officials sell this renowned site, local activists staged in attempt to reverse a situation even as they faced an uphill task given that time had passed. If your politicians who share your roots do not see you as their people, then you are likely to find yourself in a jam. If your politician who you can see clearly do not share your roots, but still choose to anoint them as your head of state, then you deserve what comes to you. You acting as if you're not living in a grimy world. You acting as if people are not evil and wicked out there. You think that we are out of the woods. For some reason, you think that it's over. Your ancestors had a certain war to fight in their time, and you have a different war to fight in your time. It's different. It is not that obvious, but you can see it. So let us not allow ourselves to get distracted with the noise, the colors, the parties, the cultural event, the wonderful smiles, people coming and dancing and laughing with you. We have to be business minded. This crap that they are able to do on us in the Caribbean, they will never allow that to their own. Never, ever, ever will. We have to keep our eyes on these politicians and I understand that there are some good ones now but I even felt a kind of way saying that right I'm not willing to bet on that but I, I, I feel that there are some right but they're in a situation they're in a jam right and they can easily be pulled into one direction or the other that same prime minister our former prime minister of St. Lucia Mr. Kenny He's married to a lady from Trinidad. And this lady, her mother is from Grenada, black woman, and her father is a Frenchman. So they are taking whatever melanin they got and turning their family back into Europeans. And this is not something to go after any certain people. This is for us as a people, people of African descent, to wise up and stop allowing ourselves to be played and then complain about it because it seems to me like we enjoy being victims the power is in our hand the power is in our hand it's no place else we are our saviors we've been sitting and waiting for too long we've been praying 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 for so many years after his, after the prayer is over it's time to get in the ring. That's how it is anywhere else. People go to war, they pray, and then it's time for combat. And it goes back to this, the men of the Caribbean. Your power is getting taken away little by little. For some reason, you think that it's over. Your ancestors had a certain war to fight in their time, and you have a different war to fight in your time.